Hey. <coughs> Hello. So, uh, sorry about uh, being a couple of minutes late. Uh, just checking everything's uh, kind of working. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, so <laughs> technical, I'm going to say technical issues. And the issues were me pressing the wrong buttons. But that's really relevant. So, sorry we're a couple of minutes late. Um, <coughs> Um, so, uh, as as always, I'm going to do a bit of housekeeping, let you know what's happening. Uh, we don't know what's happening. Uh, we were put into Tier 3 in London um, this afternoon, starting on Wednesday. As far as we're aware, it doesn't affect our pool training sessions, but, you know, it, we went into it today, uh, so we won't know until uh, at least tomorrow um, how that affects our training sessions. Fingers crossed, it's not going to affect us. Um, okay, so last week I did uh, five um, five concepts that you uh, need to. No, I said master, but it's uh, that's. I don't think you're going to ever master truly master the concepts as you move closer towards them. They're going to be you know moving further away because they're concepts. They're not they're not something you can uh, you can just you know kind of write. Oh, I've got that mastered. Okay. So last week we were talking about concepts, whereas this week I'm going to give you uh, four um, uh, what did I call techniques? Four essential techniques you need now. If you've watched the channel uh, at all, you will probably be able to guess uh, uh, number three. Um, it's a little bit, um, <clears throat> a little bit of a cheat on my ha my part because I've, I've put two in for number three, but they're not going to surprise you. Um, so I've given you a heads up. I've told you number three is a bit of a cheat. <laughs> so let's let's move on and if you've got any questions as always if you message me it will come up on the live stream and I can answer the questions in a little while uh, so we'll go through the four uh, essential techniques you need to to master did I call it master I can't even see what the, the title is uh, techniques you need to know I just says four essential techniques <laughs> um, you need to know these you need to start working on you need to learn them okay so Number um, number one or two are interchangeable. They're not in the order that you they're of importance. Okay, so um, number uh, I'm looking at my list to see which which shall I do first? Number one or number two? I'll do number one. Okay, so number one, the first thing you need to uh, essential technique you need is the last breath before you hold your breath. The last breath before you hold your breath. Okay, so several things I want to cover about the last breath. Okay, so you have done whatever breathe up you're going to do. If you're a no tanks, uh, uh, if you're learning the no tank system, you'll have done your candle blows, which are preparing for the last breath, both mentally and physically. And then you take in the last breath, the actual last breath. Okay. Um, you need to get the most important thing you're trying to do is get the most amount of oxygen into your lungs in the most efficient way. That's what you're doing with the last breath. The most amount of oxygen, most efficient way. Now, if I were to do uh, an example of what people would expect to see from a last breath, I will let you Google it and YouTube it. YouTube it? Can you YouTube it? I don't know. Google YouTube. Look on YouTube and find loads, any loads of freediving videos, and most of them will have as the last breath. Water's here. Imagine ethereal music. You've just been watching, um, you know, uh, whales and dolphins. Water's here, and I'm resting, probably on a boy. <sighs> Okay, that's not a very efficient way of getting the air into your lungs. Is not an efficient way. Okay, you you can see my neck is burr, 
because I'm creating this uh, tiny little space for the air to go in. All right? And it, it's hard work. Feels good, looks good on video, but it's not actually a good last breath. Remember, the objective is to get the most amount of oxygen efficiently into the lungs. So the last breath should be, that's it. That is it, okay? I open my mouth, okay? I don't do it through the nose. I do it from my mouth, okay? There, there's 147 reasons why you should breathe through your nose. Most of them don't apply to the last breath before a breath hold, all right? So I'm breathing through the mouth, so there's no resistance. The air's going in super easy. I'm breathing into the belly, soft, but about 80% of my lung full, maybe 90% that's it if you create a, a wedge here look at my shoulders coming up as I take that last little bit in all this funny facial expressions like right? complete waste of energy doesn't help you get any more air in okay the reason you're tensing like this is to because you're creating a a friction here, you're creating a, a stoppage, and then you have to work hard to get the air in. <sighs> a frowning, using oxygen, and funny, f a waste of time. The last breath should be. <sighs> and I'm getting more exaggerated as I do it. I'm do, do, breathing even more than on the first one. That's what I'm, maybe 90, 95% full lung. Because you see my, my chest coming up. A little bit of air. You know, a little bit of... A little bit of um, clavicular action going on as well. Right. Notice, I don't try and take my last breath through a straw. Because it's not efficient. Or a snorkel. Because it's not efficient. Okay, doesn't matter how big the snorkel is, it's going to create a bit of resistance. It's going to make it harder to get that last breath in. While we're on the point of snorkels, you have a snorkel in your mouth. The air you breathe out goes into the snorkel. The horrible, stale air that you are getting rid of your body goes into the snorkel. On your last breath, you're breathing it back in. It actually increases the dead air space that you have in your head doubles it okay so usually there's air in my throat and my mouth which doesn't fully exit when i breathe out still a little bit of air in my mouth i'm breathing back in but only a tiny bit with a snorkel all the air in my mouth goes back in. All in there in my throat goes back in and all the air in the snorkel. So for me, snorkels create, a, a, or um, what's the word? Oh man, what's the word? Snorkels diminish the quality of the last breath. Okay, uh, people argue about it, but the physics state that you're breathing in the air, you just breathed out. Some people will say they're more relaxed laying on their front with their snorkel in their mouth. Fine. That may be true. I'm not arguing with that. There's ways around it. But the fact is, the snorkel is dead air that you've just breathed out and you're breathing it straight back into your lungs. Another thing you'll see people do, okay, is pack. Okay, or carp. This is, I breathe in how much air I want to, I want to breathe in. In my case, it's not, you know, 90, 95%. And then I top up with a pack. Or I breathe in 100% and I over pack. So 100% of my air's in. And I can pack a little bit more. I can get 110% of my lung volume in. That's what packing is. Now, you've got to decide whether you want to pack or not. 99.9% .9 of the time, 99.9% .9 of your dives 
don't require a pack. I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that. Because you might be just, uh, you know, kind of ducking down to see a fish. You might be doing uh, a safety dive. So you might be going to five, ten meters to, to watch your buddy. You might be just swimming down the end of the pool. You might be doing a warm up. You might be doing a training. All these things don't require packing. There may be one dive that you need packing for. Okay. Now, why do you pack? I've covered this in in other live streams, but I'll, I'll kind of mention it again. So packing gives you more air in the lungs than you kind of usually can get in there. This could be useful. Some people say it's useful for free for a free dive, for static apnea because I've got you know a uh, hundred percent full of you know, lungs. Okay, hundred percent. Say say that's uh, I don't know, let's say eight liters. Twenty percent of that is oxygen. Fine, you can work out how much oxygen I've got in my lungs. If I can take eight liters and then pack another two liters in you'll be doing bloody well to do that but let's just go with the numbers i've kind of you know easy numbers i can get 10 liters of air in there compressed under pressure there's no problem but there's 20 percent of that is oxygen okay so i'm getting more oxygen so that's why some people say for static packing helps personally the extra effort um getting that air in is effort remember what's the principle of our last breath most amount of oxygen most efficiently that's it so i personally feel static the packing the benefits aren't great enough to do it all right especially if you're going to do a series of, of statics it's quite tiring to do the packing. Personally, um, I also found it really uncomfortable once I've packed. I can pack quite well, and I'll tell you why I can pack quite well in, in a while, but I feel uncomfortable. So if I pack, I'm like struggling to hold the air in. So for me, a static, I wanna be full breath, maybe, maybe one tiny pack, not so I'm bloated, so that there's a pressure that can lock the glottis and, and I can relax even more. Maybe. Any more than that, it's uncomfortable. But most of the time, a static is just super quick, super easy, super efficient. And the extra oxygen I could have got from packing is gonna make a little bit of difference maybe to my time but i don't care about the time i'm looking for the enjoyment and some people go oh yeah but that extra oxygen gives me an extra 30 seconds well if you're worried about an extra 30 seconds then that's up to you you go away you do your 30 seconds extra absolutely fine i'm not i'm enjoy. I, i'm i'm into enjoyment and relaxation so i'll take that 30 seconds off my time not that i'm even timing it i won't pack if you go deep however packing changes things yeah, so if, and I've been through this before, so I'll only briefly cover it. If, say, and these numbers are completely out there, okay? If I can take five liters of, of air into my lungs, when I go down to 10 meters, I've got two and a half. If I go down to 30, I've got one and a quarter. If I'm at the surface, take a full lungful, got five liters, and then pack another five liters. It's impossible, by the way, but the numbers are easy for me. I'm doing a live stream. Let me have that almost easy. If I can pack another five, I've got 10 liters in. So I go down to 10 meters, I've got five liters. Go down to 30 meters, I've got two and a half. I go down to 70 meters, I've got 1.25. Which is what I had at 30 meters if I didn't pack. Okay, so you've got more air, more volume, kind of. Not more volume, actually, but more air that creates more volume as you go down. But don't worry about it. Effectively, I've got 1.25 litres of air at 70 metres as opposed to 1.25 litres of air at 30 metres. Okay, remember these numbers are just figurative, so you can work out. You can follow the math. Okay?
So packing for depth, different kettle of fish. And don't forget, I said I was super uncomfortable when I pack. But that's on the surface. If I go down to 10 meters, I'm, I'm going to be back to my comfortable zone. So duck dive, two free kicks, I'm comfortable again, but with more air. So packing, there's a, there's a reason for it, for going deep. Okay. So last breath. Let's go through this again. Uh, just to clear up, last breath before you hold your breath needs to be as much oxygen as fit, as uh, as uh, efficient as you can. Personally, snorkel kind of detracts quite a lot from that last breath. If you're snip, spear fishing or snorkeling, different kettle of fish. You just gotta snorkel in, take your breath, do a dive, take your snorkel out, obviously, come back up, put it in, carry on. That's fine. But if you're free diving, free diving, and you want to do a good dive, I don't want to breathe in my stay there. No funny face, none of this. <laughs> Waste of energy. And packing, you've got to decide whether you're going to pack. That's your last breath before you go. <whistles> I'm whistling because I didn't quite think I was going to go that much uh, into it. We're like 15 minutes in, I've only covered one point. <laughs> Mind you, I haven't got any questions yet. Nobody's put any questions up, so I'm good to go. Number two. Point two, the second uh, technique you need to master. The first breath after the breath hold. Now, what's the objective there? It's to get as much oxygen in your body and CO2 out, as much oxygen and CO2 out as efficiently as possible. Weirdly enough, exactly the same as... Uh, as as the, the the last breath before the dive okay so you come up i've added the co2 because the pain of the dive the pain the thing that makes you want to breathe is the carbon dioxide so you want to get rid of that but you want to get fresh air in okay so most important is fresh air in oxygen in as efficient as possible so how do you do that you come up fully fully full of air fully full of air i personally teach don't breathe out underwater okay again you can watch youtube see some world champions they're breathing out as they're coming up that's up to them that's that's that 0.01 percent of the dives yeah most of the time you don't need those extra inches minute uh, inches seconds whatever so don't do it don't breathe out underwater. Come up, hit the surface. You're nice and buoyant because you haven't breathed out. And get the CO2 out and breathe in. Now, if you run around the block, now, go, run around the block. Come back, you're knackered. You'll be like... <sighs> Your body breathes out. It's trying to get rid of the CO2. It knows. If you do a long swim, you come up, you're like... <sighs> you'll be breathing out. You, your body will be getting rid of that horrible, poisonous, in inverted commas, carbon dioxide. So don't worry about the breathing out part. Don't worry about getting rid of the CO2. That will happen. Worry about breathing in, which is why I say the objective of the first breath is oxygen in and CO2 out and as efficiently as possible because the CO2 does itself, okay? concentrate on the inhalation okay concentrate on the inhalation so you come up i like this this kind of surface i'm doing it i, I was doing it better earlier okay so you come up to the surface come out of the surface we call them sigh breaths getting that air in you're not going to come up and go because you want to get it air in efficiently Big wide mouth, get the air in, and then sigh. Remember, if you're knackered, you're going to be breathing out quick. You're not going to worry about that. So worry about the inhalation. Sigh breaths. Big breath in, sigh. Big breath in, sigh. Because you are also need, 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 need to gain control of your breathing. Both mentally and physically, this is super important. If you can control your breathing, you can control your... And remember, the breath is a silken thread with which you control your entire body. That's 
you know, where you control your body. So if you can get control of your breath by <gasps> important, get oxygen in, control. <sighs> get oxygen in, <gasps> important, <sighs> control. And by the third breath, you should be getting a semblance of control. <gasps> And then three more breaths. If you're not getting your breath back or control of your breath back in th three sigh of breaths, followed by three um, free recovery breaths and three normal breaths, then you've gone too far. Okay. Personally, unless you suffer from low uh, low blood pressure, I wouldn't do hook breathing because it adds an extra layer of complication in there. Hook breathing, by the way, is taught by a lot of people and they say it increases oxygen in the brain. It doesn't. That's a fallacy. Look back two videos ago about ten, uh, five fallacies that you've been taught in a freediving course. Okay? Uh, and it it's bloody hard work to do hook breathing correctly. If you've got low blood pressure, do it because it increases the blood pressure. If you haven't, don't hook breathe. So I would suggest don't hook breathe. You don't need it. Okay? So that's number two. The first breath after the dive. Oxygen in as, as efficiently as possible. Okay, number three. Now, I've already pre-warned you about number three. Uh, it's a bit of a cheat, and mm, you might have heard me say it before. But last week, I was talking about the concepts. And I was talking about the concept of relaxation and enjoyment. It's a concept which many, many people talk about but don't teach, don't follow through. See the video the week before. Five fallacies. Tonight, I'm going to talk about the skills of relaxation and enjoyment. Now, relaxation is a skill that you can learn. If you're sitting there watching this video, stop. Stop watching. Yeah. Close your eyes. Stop what you're doing. If you're talking to somebody, or close your eyes. I'm not going to put any funny pictures up. You're not going to miss anything. And drop your shoulders. Soften the back. Soften the facial muscles. Bam. Most people who are sitting there watching will go, oh yeah, you can open your eyes again now. You don't have to. But most people sitting there when I say that, they'll just drop the shoulder. Oh yeah, I can drop my shoulder. I can relax, soften my spine a little bit. I can relax my facial muscles. That's tension that you've got while watching a YouTube video. Okay, That's going to increase exponentially when you uh, put on some equipment, go to a swimming pool, start training, start thinking about the fact that you're going to hold your breath. Okay, The tension you're holding right now, you don't need it. You can get rid of it. And that's a skill that you can learn. The ability to recognize and eliminate stress in the body. We call it relaxation. And I, I, uh, I urge you to do that throughout your day. Set an alarm. Set an alarm on your on your on your phone. Every uh, random. What I want. What I want. By the way, and I've said this before. I want um, somebody who writes apps. I want a random timer that just goes off five times during the day. Do -do -do -do. Oh, drop my shoulders. Oh yeah. You'd be cycling along. Do -do -do -do. Oh, I relax my shoulders. Random alarm. Hmm. That's what I want. Anyway, so. That's a skill you can learn. It's a concept. And loads of people don't understand it. But it's a skill you can learn and you can practice it every day. Awareness and elimination of tension. It's called relaxation. And also enjoyment. The enjoyment comes into CBT. You know about the people I'm going to tell you about now. You've met them. Some people, uh, yeah, it was a good session, but it was, uh, it was a bit cold. It was a good session, but, you know, uh, my fin was a bit loose. And you've got other people, oh my God, that was a great session. Now, if you've gone in swimming pool and it's a bit cold, there's nothing you can do about it being cold. It's cold. It's a swimming pool. Unless you're going to have a word with the manager, unless you are the manager, and you're going to turn the, turn the temperature up, nothing you can do about it. Let it go. You can enjoy the sessions more by... Being aware of what you say and take out the things that you can't change. Some, you know, that's what you can do. This enjoying 
yourself is a skill that you can learn and you can practice. When you finish watching this video, the first person you speak to, just tell them a short thing about this video, whether you speak to them on, on, online, or on the phone, or in the kitchen. Tell them about this video. you got choice. You can say, oh, I watched this video about freedom. I don't know about it. It's, you know, it's, not, it's not your thing. Or you can say, oh, it's really interesting. YouTube video. That's it. You can say those two things. Doesn't affect anybody else in the world. Except you, in your psyche. If you walk away thinking it was interesting, you'll have enjoyed it. Or you'll have thought it was interesting. That's how you teach yourself to enjoy things. Now, you make the decision whether you're going to watch the, 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 this your live stream next week. It's you. It doesn't matter. It's not affected by whether you have enjoyed I mean, is it affected by whether you enjoyed it? But if you've used that technique, CBT, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, kind of, it's not a therapy, but um, to teach yourself to enjoy stuff, you know, you will get more enjoyment out of life. You've watched this video, the time is gone. You're not going to get it back by going, yeah, but it didn't really teach me much, or Monk's beard annoyed me, or whatever it is, okay? So let it go. If you're not enjoying it, then you shouldn't be watching. <laughs> if, you, if you've got this far and you're sitting there going, I'm not enjoying this, you shouldn't be watching. Hang on, consecutive viewers. It went up. It genuinely, as I looked at that, it went up genuinely. So it didn't go down. So, Okay, so relaxation and enjoyment. These are skills that you've got to learn and you cannot learn them without practicing. You have to practice them. Okay, so you want to get better them, you practice them. And I've told you how. Uh, and number uh, f four. I don't know why I said uh, four essential techniques. I should have said five and then kept it in a in a in a series. Okay, so number four. Really, number five. Number four. Efficiency. You can become more efficient, both uh, with your movement. And with your equipment. Okay, now, literally at 6.55 or something, I went online and just kind of went, let's, let's find a picture of somebody whose equipment is just a little bit, what? That's not, that's going to be making, like, that's inefficiency. That's going to be making drag. So, uh, cut it down, uh, tuck it in. There's, there's ways of tucking it in that still allow it to be safety, uh, or safe as a safety mechanism, yeah? Think about your equipment. Can I make it more efficient? Okay, can I stop having danglies can i whatever all right because while you're sitting at home watching this i'm guessing you're not watching this just about to jump in the swimming pool you're not free diving but you can be improving your free diving by thinking about your equipment okay um but when you do go in the pool what's the point of your training now if you just go to the swimming pool and go right, i'm gonna hold my breath longer i'm gonna swim further We've been through this. I've covered this. It's not the way to improve. What you want to do is improve your technique to become more efficient in water. So try and swim a length with less less kicks. And then try something else, swim a length. So you, obviously you've got to repeat stuff. So I'd suggest do 10 lengths. And it doesn't matter if you can't make the length, do 10 half lengths. Or, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter long lengths or whatever. Just do 10 single swims of a set distance and change things. Every time, so you do one, count your fin strokes. Then, I don't know, change your body position. Same, count your fin strokes. Uh, then, change the, the way your body moves in, in, a, in a stroke, count the fin strokes. I'm trying to keep it really general here without giving you specific things to do, if that makes sense. 
Do 10 lengths, count the fin strokes, change things every single time. And make notes, because you can't learn without making notes. Make notes, first length was this, and, and then next week you get in and you go, well, I, I, lo I, I lost two, two strokes when I went uh, you know, medium paced. Uh, and when I kept my chin in, I lost another two strokes. So try combining them that way. Do another 10 lengths, change them. Change the different things, count the thin strokes. You know, that's a simple way of working on your efficiency. Okay? Because uh, the, my idea of freediving is moving efficiently underwater on a single breath. It doesn't matter whether you're pulling, whether you're breaststroking, monofinning, stereo finning, you're trying to move efficiently underwater. All right? So take that way, play with it. Efficiency of equipment and efficiency in your movement. They're the two types. I mean, there's, there's yeah, that's it. Those are the two things you're gonna. So uh, Alicia says, being cold in the swimming pool makes it more difficult for my body to relax though. True, it does. And I'm not saying it doesn't. But you can be aware of it, and you can be more relaxed with the skills of knowing how to relax. You can then be more relaxed. I'm not saying you're going to be as relaxed as humanly possible. I'm guessing nice warm duvet, comfortable bed and pillow, okay? You're going to be even more relaxed, but you haven't got that option in the swimming pool. So you want to be as relaxed as you can be. By learning how to relax, learning to be aware of the tension and let it go. Now, interesting uh, being uh, cold, and you said it makes it more difficult for my body to relax. Yeah, that is not my body. That's me. <sighs> Shivering, that's my body. Let it do it. Let my body do it. I'm not getting, I'm not adding stress to it. The body's doing stuff. Fine. And actually, as you start to master the, the skills of uh, relaxation and efficiency, you will find there's a point where you do start shivering, not necessarily because it's super cold, it's because your body is going, oh, I don't need to do this, oh, I don't need to do this, I don't need to burn this uh, um, fuel to stay warm. And it'll get it wrong, and it'll it'll stop, oh, and you'll get cold, and then it'll start working again. So there will be times where you start shivering, not because you're like, oh my god, I'm so cold. It's like, you know, tiny bit cold in your body. So like, oh, I don't need to burn this, burn this energy to stay warm. So it stops doing it. Oh, actually, I do need to burn that energy to stay warm. So then you shiver, which is your body burning energy, uh, burning up uh, fuel to stay warm. It creates heat. The shivering. So it stops and it starts again. I'm not saying, you know, jump in an ice bath and don't worry about shivering. You know, I'm just talking about a standard swimming pool, which are usually 20, 26, 28 degrees. Okay. Which is kind of cold for a 26, is cold for a swimming pool, but it's not like super cold. It's not like what we would class as human beings as cold. But it doesn't stop you being more relaxed. If you see what I mean. There's a difference between your body doing stuff and you physically getting rid of tension. Yeah. Um, and if, if obviously, if every week you're cold, then you wear a rash vest. If every week you're cold, you can wear a, a you know, something. If it's really cold, you can wear something over it. Most people find that if you go to a few sessions, your body gets used to it. Ah, I know. Marcus is getting in the, in the swimming pool. I need. I can't you know, cut out all the, the, the heat making things. I need to keep the heat up. The body. That's me. The body thinking, not me. I go too far. So that's your four things. Okay? That's your four things. Number one, learn, practice, think about, master the last breath before your dive. Number two, the first breath after your dive, okay? Both of them are oxygen in as efficient as possible. Okay, so I said no snorkel, no funny face, packing, decide if you want it. Personally, I would suggest no hook breathing when you come up. 
Number three, and four. Uh, number three, learn relaxation. Learn if, um, enjoyment by using CBT and and just kind of relaxation, just awareness of your relaxation. And number four, efficiency. Efficiency of movement, efficiency of equipment. And this is actually where all equipment comes from, you know. Uh, you buy a super smooth skin suit, it glides through the water more efficiently. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're going to climb over rocks. Don't get a super smooth skin, that's just, you know. But... That's why super smooth skin people want it. It's more efficient. More efficient at heat retention. More efficient moving through the water. That's why people wear monofins. They want to go straight. Monofins more efficient at going straight than stereo fins. But think about it. Plan it. Master it. Hopefully that's helped you. Um, no questions come through. And, and we'll, it's true if we've run right out of time. I've gone over by like eight minutes. So... Um, hopefully see you next week uh, any questions as always put them in the comments now or uh, ping them over to facebook find me on facebook um, and i will try and answer them next uh, next monday so thank you very much for joining me and i'll see you later ciao